Let's go over some of the intrinsic anterior muscles of the lower leg. Let's start out with a muscle called the tibialis anterior. This is a very important muscle when we're trying to dorsiflex our foot. I'll just get Mickey to move her right foot into dorsiflexion and back down again. And also an action, the normal actions of, of gait we go between pronation and supination. The tibialis anterior is involved in supination. Just bring it up there. We're, we're over-exaggerating a little bit there, but it definitely shows that. Now, if we start to look at the tibialis anterior, which is in orange here, we look and we see that the origin of this muscle is in the lateral condyle and superior lateral shaft of the tibia. It goes down the leg, and you'll see here these green areas across here. This is representative of what we call a retinaculum. It's a band of fascia or connective tissue that holds tendons in place from bowstringing. Bowstringing means basically that the tendons would come out from the ankle if something wasn't there to hold it in place. Now if you look at the tibialis anterior, it goes underneath here and it inserts on the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal. The next muscle we're going to go over is the extensor hallucis longus. If we look down the leg here in purple, running right from the central part of the fibula, right down to the big toe, we'll see a straight line there. This is the muscle known as the extensor hallucis longus. The origin of this muscle is the central medial fibula and an area called the interosseous membrane, which is connective tissue between the tibia and the fibula. It goes right underneath, and this area in green is referred to as the extensor retinaculum, a superior inferior aspect. The extensor halicus longus goes underneath the retinaculum, and it inserts on the dorsal and distal phalanx of the first part of the big toe here. Now, in terms of actions, this muscle is involved in only moving the big toe, and it's involved in dorsiflexion and in supination of the big toe. Why don't you just show them there that action there, making on the other foot. Right. So basically it just brings the big toe up and it turns the side of it there. So this is dorsiflexion and supination of the big toe. The next structure we're going to go over is the extensor digitorum longus. The extensor digitorum longus originates on the lateral tibial condyle the anterior fibular shaft, and the interosseous membrane. Halfway down here, the interosseous membrane is basically an area of connective tissue between the tibia and the fibula. You'll see in orange here, the tendon of this muscle comes down, goes underneath the green area here, which is referred to as the retinaculum, or extensor retinaculum. There is a superior and inferior aspect. You'll see that the tendon actually splits into four sections here, and inserts into toes two through five. Now what's really interesting is we actually go down here a bit, we'll see that it then splits or subdivides again in half and inserts it on into or attaches to the middle phalanx of there. Now, in terms of the actions of the extensor digitorum longus, it dorsiflexes toes two through five. So why don't we take a look here, Mixie, just sort of see what... Okay, right there. Good. Okay, Mickey. Now, actually that's pretty good. You're getting better at this. Yeah. So it comes up here, and down. take it down, and back up again, and down, good. Now, when it comes to kinetic chain relationships, what's interesting about this muscle, the extensor digitorum longus, is that we have muscles in the foot here, we have the extensor digitorum brevis that actually insert into this, and we also have the interosseous muscles which also insert into this particular muscle. So it really is interesting how one structure farther up the leg inserts down into several structures in the foot. The next muscle we're going to go over is called the peroneus tertius. It's kind of an interesting muscle because not everybody has this muscle. Uh, that's why in textbooks they refer to it sometimes as an insignificant muscle. Now, if we look at where this muscle is in yellow, the origin is the anterior inferior fibula. Translates down here and goes underneath the extensor retinaculum. Goes down and it basically inserts onto the fifth metatarsal. 
Now, because this is a very small muscle, it basically just assists in performing certain actions. Uh, dorsiflexion and eversion of the foot. Go ahead, Mickey, just move your foot up there into dorsiflexion and eversion. Good. Excellent. Now we're going to go over the extrinsic lateral muscles of the lower leg. We're going to go over the peroneus longus and brevis, also known as the fibularis longus and brevis. For the peroneus longus, this will be in purple. Now, if we look at the origin of this muscle, it actually takes a very interesting path. It basically goes from the superior lateral shaft of the fibula, follows down, and it goes all the way down the side here, and underneath this green area here. Uh, basically, this is the retinaculum for the peroneal muscle. We have a superior and inferior retinaculum. Now, if we follow this down, we're going to go under what we call the peroneal tubercle of the calcaneus. Then we're going to follow underneath the foot, and it'll actually go on to the other side here. And as it goes across here, it's, this is the cuboid here. It'll go under what we call the plantar tubercle of the cuboid, and eventually inserting on the base of the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal. In terms of the actions of the peroneus longus, this muscle basically uh, brings the foot into plantar flexion and pronation. Why don't you just demonstrate here, Mickey, and show. So that's plantar flexion, and we have pronation. Just go directly into plantar flexion first here. This is the action of plantar flexion. Now, do plantar flexion and pronation. Good. Excellent. The next muscle we're going to go over is called the peroneus brevis. Now, this is going to be the muscle in yellow here. The muscle in purple is the peroneus longus. Even though it looks like the yellow part of the peroneus brevis is on top of the peroneus longus, is actually underneath it. Now, if we consider where the origin of the peroneus brevis is, we'll see that it originates at the inferior lateral shaft of the fibula. Now, it basically goes down and it goes behind the lateral malleolus. Underneath the retinaculum here, which is the peroneal retinaculum, basically goes down superior to what's referred to as the peroneal tubercle on the calcaneus, and then it translates down to the fifth metatarsal where it inserts on the lateral tubercle of the fifth metatarsal. Now, basically this muscle assists in pronation of the foot. Why don't you take it into pronation there? Show. Sure. Good. Back. What also means that it assists in plantar flexion. Just take it directly to plantar flexion. Good. Toes pointing down. One more time in plantar flexion. Great. 